So, Hasbro's first ever Zord line is here, and they're definitely robots in disguise. Hey guys, Ryan here. Hope you've enjoyed my three first ever live streams from uh, the weekend where I managed to find all five of the Beast Morpher Zords in the UK in Smith's Toys. They've really picked up the mantle from Toys R Us and ran with it. I know they've always been quite good at getting hold of Power Ranger toys before the regular retailers, but yeah, this year, really impressive. Uh, obviously I wanted to do my usual style of video review for them, but they were the quickest way to get it out there. Now I've had a couple of days with them and I'm in a better position to be able to review them properly. So Power Rangers as a brand is a marathon, not a sprint. And even though Beast Morphers as a series kicked off its run in America, we've currently overtaken their toy line, at least as far as the deluxe Zords are concerned. And Australia has overtaken even the airing of new episodes. Also, I hope the irony of the show having not even aired yet in England isn't lost on you. So what's the toy history of these? So Power Rangers Beast Morphers, as many will know, is actually based off the 2012 Super Sentai series, Takumi Sentai Go Busters. If that sounds a bit strange to you, well it is. For decades, Power Rangers always ran one year behind the Japanese Super Sentai series. But then Disney cancelled the show in 2010, and Saban soon brought it back, but not quick enough to create a series that year. However, they did decide to go with the next in line, which became Power Rangers Samurai. Then, of course, the new Nickelodeon deal meant that that had to be split over two years, and all of a sudden we were three years behind Japan instead of the usual one. Power Rangers did Megaforce and Super Megaforce as one story that adapted two Sentais over two years, though arguably did neither of them justice. And then in 2015, which was when we should have gotten the Go Busters adaptation, Saban actually decided to go back to dinosaurs and we got Dino Charge. For the first time ever, Power Rangers had skipped past a Sentai series, and the same thing happened again after Dino Charge as they skipped the train theme series and went straight to Ninja Steel. By this point, logic suggested that we would next skip that Minecraft Wild Animal inspired series and go cosmic again with what was the Sentai's first series in space, though would be our third. However, things started to change, first when Hasbro became the master toy licensee and then the full franchise holder for Power Rangers. They actually pulled a blinder and brought us back into 2012, the first series that was skipped past. Go Busters became Beast Morphers. I remember when that announcement was first made and they included a picture of the three main Go Busters and the Power Rangers Beast Morphers logo and people were still a little unsure, maybe it meant that we were actually getting the Minecraft inspired series and they just used the wrong suits in the promo pic. Luckily that was not the case and Go Busters it was. We can only speculate on why they did this. Maybe it's because they like the complexity of Go Busters lining up with their own experience of running the Transformers toy line. Maybe it's because Super Sentai is actually rumoured to be having some troubles in Japan and going back to series they skipped actually gives them more track to lay in front of them for Power Rangers should the day ever come where Sentai stops producing new episodes. Maybe they just looked at everything that was available and decided that this was genuinely the best option. As I say, all speculation, but I'm really glad this is the way they went. Because from a design point of view, Go Busters is definitely the most interesting and allows Hasbro to try some new things that they wouldn't have otherwise been able to in the usual rigid Power Rangers structure. These Zords are a great example of that. Obviously a lot of people out there have the 2012 toys from Bandai Japan, but now here we are in 2019, Hasbro's given us their own adaptation and it's definitely their own take on them. Like in Japan, the Zords have initially been released separately, so you're looking at roughly £90 or dollars in order to complete the first combining Megazord. However, that only requires three Zords, something we haven't had since Dino Charge back in 2015. Ironically, the season that followed Go Busters in Sentai. The timeline is a little bit confusing now. But yes, here we are with Hasbro's double and triple converting Zords. And they're all pretty interesting, I think. We have the Red Rangers Racer Zord, one of the slightly more expensive, in England about £3 more, larger boxed sized triple converting Zords. That's a race car that turns into a cheetah and it has its own battle mode. Then the Yellow Rangers Chopper Zord, that's a helicopter that turns into a jackrabbit. And finally the Blue Wheeler Zord, a lorry or truck that turns into a gorilla. They are great toys, so let's take a closer look. The designs. 
I don't know about you, but personally I can see a lot of the past in this Megazord. For example, the racer reminds me of Turbo's Red Lightning car, at least it does until you attach the cheetah head, at which point it reminds me of RPM, as do the other vehicles when they've got the beast heads on. The way the Blue Ranger's leg covers cover the Red Ranger Zord in Megazord mode reminds me a bit of the Mega Voyager and how Mega V3 would lap over Mega V1, I believe, uh, in a very similar way. I don't know if Toei intentionally pay homage to previous Sentais, but I imagine they do. I think Dino Charge the following year having similar uh, patterns to the original Daizuzin prove that. And especially originally coming off a series like Gokaija, which celebrated the entire history of Sentai, I imagine there being a few design cues taken from previous mecha was just another way to honour that in a less explicit way than having legendary swords. So these are the three main beasts in the series, and though elements of them are familiar, they're definitely a lot more complex than we're used to. I really like that they start out as vehicles, it makes sense that that's the fastest way to get them into battle. If you remember, the Super Train was quicker in Lightspeed Rescue than the Lightspeed Zords at getting them to the scene of the emergency. Then you've got a good tie-in with the Beast Bots that they can link in and that uh, it creates Beast Heads on the Zords. Personally, I don't really like the Beast Head in vehicle mode, and it annoys me that in the show whenever there's someone piloting them they pretty much have the beast heads on all the time. I would prefer them just in regular vehicle mode and then the head is just the first sign that they're about to transform into the animal mode. However that's just my opinion. Going into animal modes then, how cool is it that we've got vehicles that can turn into animals? I think they all look really brilliant and sufficiently different when you do convert them from the first modes. And lastly for red you've got its third mode, its battle mode, and this actually kind of reminds me of Turbo, uh, the double morphing uh, Zords, or even Robo Racer. I will definitely get onto the Turbo review soon guys, uh, the comparisons are very interesting. So you've got three Zords that already have seven modes before you even put them together. You can see why this series marks such a departure from what we usually get. What then are the differences to the original? So very many. I don't actually have the GoBusters toys, so my comparisons are down to what I've seen of the toys online. A huge thanks to Doi Hyun. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that, I'm sure we don't even speak the same language. But his video showing all the transformations and combinations of the GoBusters toy line has been instrumental in me being able to compare Hasbro's versions. Go and check it out, it's at nearly 3 million views, so there's a good chance you've already seen it. Anyway, there's so much to go through in differences to the Japanese versions, I'm actually going to incorporate them into the next two sections, what's bad and what's good about it. Speaking of, what is bad about these toys? Well, unfortunately there is something that irritates me about each Zord. If you'd watch my livestream, you'll be well aware that for Red, it's the tail. So the tail has a different purpose in each mode. In the race car, it becomes the spoiler. As the cheetah, it becomes the tail. And in battle mode, it becomes the sword. But in two of those modes, it is so loose. It's much better in car mode, but the cheetah is truly awful. It barely tucks in and uses friction alone to stay upright. It just doesn't work. The instructions hilariously show it pointing upwards in cheetah mode, but the weight of it actually turns it and flops it back around. Also, if you lift it up at too much of an angle, it'll fall out the back of it. I don't know how kids are going to get on with this, but as it doesn't technically clip on, it just kind of slots in and then falls out. I can't imagine many will be using it in their play with this thing, apart from as a sword. Although it's supposed to be a race car, there's no headlight paint on the front of the car. Also, there's nowhere to store the cheetah head when not in use, so racer mode either needs it attached or carefully put aside. This is the only vehicle out of the main three where the beast head has to either be attached or left separately. In differences to the Bandai Japan version, there's more on there that could be painted silver in the warrior mode, and there's more on there that could be gold in the cheetah mode. Truthfully, I think I prefer the cheetah mode from Japan, having panels that drop down and still have some paint design on and oddly enough the legs that are visible in the car mode. But if you think that's ridiculous, then moulding them on as a second pair that's visible in car mode is even more so. Annoyances for the wheeler zord, well unfortunately the truck hatch doesn't close flush with the cab. 
Also, there's a new proprietary port system on the Zords, gone is Zord Builder. But you need to be aware that they go on best at an angle, so make sure you follow the shape of it. I found trying to force it discolours the plastic, which is more brittle than we've been used to. That must be to do with the lightweight design. Gorilla Mode has also been completely redesigned from the Japanese version, using a new body piece which does not feature in the Go Busters version. In Wheeler Mode it literally becomes the body of the truck, linking the front and back halves together and stopping it from wobbling, but then in Gorilla Mode it becomes the main body piece, you literally plug all the limbs kind of onto it. So this is why, for anyone wondering, there's no leaning Gorilla Mode, because the Japanese version didn't have that extra height, and so needed it. No, unfortunately you can't cheat it and try and make the Gorilla without it, believe me I've tried. So there's only a standing gorilla mode, despite the box showing us a leaning one in the cartoon. A little bit weird. Also, no firing bananas. I'm only partially joking about the firing bananas. They didn't paint the coloured squares along the silver truck side, but to be fair, they didn't in Japan either, they just made that section black. They have left the box outline, so you could put it in yourselves. Similar as well, there's only an outline for what should be a yellow arrow on the gorilla's helmet. Again, you can do it yourself if you want. Also, a bit more of a practical problem, the front wheel sections, it's one of the more fiddly, more tedious aspects of the combination. Here, it seems you have to remove them and sometimes reverse them between each mode. Onto the chopper zord, and I actually got something wrong in my live stream. Helicopter mode shouldn't catch the blades on the front of the zord, I just had that piece on the upper pegs which are meant for the jackrabbit mode. However there's still no quick helicopter blade spin possible. I'm sure if there was I'd only be annoyed that they don't stay still, so you can kind of see Hasbro's dilemma here. Also in rabbit mode, the blades, now ears, unclip a little too easily. And the head wobbles quite a bit because of how it connects. I don't know why I was expecting this, but there's no truck connector, so if you want to recreate that bit from the first Zord scene where the helicopter actually lands on the helicopter pad on the Wheeler Zord, know that you're only going to be able to fake it. There's also a new mystery piece in the box, it's half of a bucket, and it's actually going to be instrumental in the back of the helmet of the two Megazord combinations. At least they've come up with a place for it on the Chopper Zord, but it can get it a little bit in the way. Once you assemble the Megazord, Red's fists are always on display now compared to being hidden round back in the Japanese version. Speaking of round the back, blue and yellow's back bit is ridiculously, comically loose. I did try and copy Japan and try and push the yellow piece onto the back of red using the screw hole. I ended up damaging the plastic around the screw hole, so yeah, the plastic is not what we're used to. So yeah, don't try it. That new gorilla body piece needs to go somewhere, I just wish they'd made it a bit tighter of a connection. What do you guys think about the gorilla head in Megazord mode? I think it's a little bit high up and that you should be able to see the outline of the cab, but Maybe it's fine? I'm not too sure. The arm connection for Yellow's new arm pieces is a little bit loose as well, so you have to be quite alert and sure that they're clipped in properly so that they won't fall off. The way that the blue leg coverings attach around red gave me a bit of trouble initially, but I think I get it now. Unfortunately, the horns on the Megazord's helmet have gone floppy and keep falling down. This after, what, two days out of the box? This is probably one of the most annoying parts so far because it's actually ruining the look of the Megazord. On the show the Zords are almost metallically painted, especially red, but the colours here are much more matte and single note coloured plastic. There's annoyingly no GB logos on any of them, so I am hoping that someone out there will maybe do some custom stickers for them. Lastly, for the combination, there is so much to remember. I know like on my live stream people were correcting me, especially in the Ultra Zord mode, like do this, change that. Even today I'm hoping I've got everything right. The finished article is so light I almost can't quite believe it. That must be to do with the density of the plastic. I don't think it's as durable quality wise as we've been used to. But on the flip side, what's great about it? Well for red, I think it's a nice touch that the cheetah mouth opens. The wheels in race car mode look really good. The elegance of the arms folding down into the battle mode is really satisfying. Battle mode is so poseable. I don't think we've ever had one like this before with this much articulation, but that also has two completely separate modes as well. The sword is a good size and it holds it well. 
Red Racer does seem like the better of the two triple converting Zords so far. Wheeler Zord is very sturdy and truck mode really great. I particularly like the Cheetah Gorilla Jackrabbit emblems on both sides. We may have lost the Grid Battle Force logos, but I'm glad we didn't lose them. In my live stream comments, one of the top comments is that it's actually better that the Gorilla can stand up freely because it's more accurate to the show. Maybe that's why Hasbro changed it, and also it looks a lot more like the battle modes for Red and Gold. I don't really mind the new way of having the Gorilla, I think it makes sense and it gives you more playability with his twisting arms and stuff. Chopper Zord I think looks the most unchanged from Japan, I like what they've done and they've actually thrown in a killer feature for the Megazord mode too, which we'll get to in a sec. Also they gave us a helicopter head, this wasn't possible in Japan because of the mini beast bot on the other side of it. But here you can pretend it's just a regular helicopter to your heart's content. On to the Megazord then, and I really want to put forward the flip side to one of my reasons against. There is so much to do here. My main complaint about the Zord line over the past decade or so has been oversimplification. A Zord clips onto a peg and presto, you have an arm, you have a leg, you have a torso. It's been too simple. In Beast X, Megazord and Ultrazord you can see visible elements of the Zords, but it isn't immediately obvious how they got to be there. I do wonder what kids actually prefer, is it out of the box playability like Dino Charge Megazord, ironically the one that follows this in Japan, or ones like this where there's a lot of steps and a date with the instruction booklet is not a bad call. I think in the short term it's the former, but if you're looking for continued excitement and brand loyalty, and it's definitely the latter. Luckily, Power Rangers is a show that can do both. I certainly still wouldn't be buying these things and putting out reviews if every season was as simple as the Dino Charge Megazord. And to that season's credit, the Plesiosaur was a bit more complicated and even I had to get the instructions out for that one. I feel that once kids can assemble and disassemble this thing, they'll feel like a real sense of accomplishment and they'll want to share that with friends and family, what they've learned how to do. And we can't ignore, this thing is so poseable. There is so much more that bends and moves here than the Bandai Japan version. It has elbows. When did a mainline Megazord last have elbows? Plus you've still got waist, thigh, and head articulation because of the Red Racer being the base of everything. I think Hasbro have definitely put a lot of thought into this design. Sure, they could have done more with all those wobbly pieces, but hey, let's give them some credit because there's no horrific wide stance. They've gone sleek and tall. They have made it look so much more like the version from the show, the Megazord suit. So I really like that. For Hasbro's first ever try at one, Beast X Megazord is for the most part a great success. They took what people didn't like about the GoBusters version, that being it was basically as wide as it was tall, and changed it. There's two more Zords from the Gold and Silver Brothers which I'll go over next time along with the Ultra Zord formation of all five, so look out for that. There's so much coming through right now, it's a really exciting time. I was midway through doing a video about the Lightning Collection, and I was supposed to then do one about Beast Morphers Figures Wave 1, then these guys came and I've changed my plans around. We've also got Lightning Collection Wave 2 and the White Ranger full-size wearable helmet up for pre-order. So yeah, there's still a lot to come this year. Guys, I'm loving hearing your thoughts on the Beast Morphers Megazord, so please keep the talk going in the comments, and follow me on Instagram at PowerRangerGram. And until the next time, see you later.